You are listening to the Ebony Covering Black America Podcast Network. You are listening to Beyond the Fit, and this is your host, Holly Cotton. This show's purpose is to go beyond just looking fit and explore topics of health and wellness so that we can all be the strongest versions of ourselves inside and out. On this episode, I wanted to find something educational. We've kind of done a couple of fun shows. So I wanted to do something that was kind of educational this episode. And so I actually looked up what awareness topics there were for May. And of course, the last two episodes we did in May are mental health awareness, which is huge. And I did not realize how important mental health was and how mental health disorders affect so broad of a population. So I thought that it was really important to address that this month. And as I was looking up what other awareness topics there were for May, I saw that May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So first, my shock was, okay, we need a whole month for skin cancer awareness. I know being a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor, I know October is huge for breast cancer awareness. I know that there's other cancers, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, every cancer has a month. So I was like, okay, you know what? I don't really know a lot about skin cancer other than what I've witnessed as a nurse, other than the patients that I've seen, just different things that I have come across in my 20 plus years of nursing and being a healthcare professional. As I started looking up skin cancer and determining, should we actually do a show about skin cancer awareness? How prevalent is this? Is it really worth looking at? The very first page that I went to from skincancer.com org talked about skin cancer in minorities and the disparity in minorities that are actually diagnosed with skin cancer compared to white counterparts that are diagnosed. And as I started looking into all of this information about it, I was like, okay, we are definitely doing a skin cancer awareness show because there's a huge difference between minorities being diagnosed minority survival rate, minorities being able to figure out whenever a mole is actually something that's cancerous. And also apparently a lot of this has to do with the fact that a lot of minorities feel like we have melanin and we have melanocytes that actually protect us from skin cancer. And while melanin is actually good, that's why you do not sunburn and you have more, like we call the melanated skins. You have a little bit of brown. You get your little summertime tan all year long, which is really awesome. You have less wrinkling. You have less of the leathery skin, all of those types of things. It's great. But what happens is because we feel like we have melanated skin, the Cancer Society is saying that we do not do those self-exams as often as other races. And what that means as a minority is that we are not doing skin assessments. We are not looking at moles and checking the size and checking around it and seeing if the circumference has changed, checking the borders, all of those types of things. Apparently, we're missing a huge part of that prevention. And as I was reading about the cancer and all of that, and I've told you guys before, if you listen to any of my other episodes, that I'm a big numbers person. I'm very, very analytical, logical. That's part of my whole medical background. Like I like to know, okay, great. You're telling me this. Now what's the statistics? What's going on? Why am I supposed to be worried about that? So the very first thing that I read about minorities and skin cancer is that they did a study of skin cancers in non-white racial ethnic groups compared to white racial groups. And what they found is that an average five-year melanoma survival rate was only 67% in black people versus 92% in white people. So if you know anyone that has cancer or that's a cancer survivor or going through cancer, whatever, they always talk about this five-year survival rate. They talk about a 10-year survival rate. So basically, they 
constantly, and I know, especially being a breast cancer survivor, they, <laughs> I heard about this so many times. There is a such and such survivor rate after five years, like your chances of getting cancer are greater. You're, and so what happens is, is that they're telling you that based off of the cancer type, the cancer size, the staging, how soon you were treated for cancer, which you're basically how you, tr- how you were treated. Was it aggressive? Did you get chemo? What all of these things based Based off of different variables, what your survival rate is five years from now. And they're saying that in a black population compared to other non-black races, that we actually had a 67% five-year survival rate. And that is crazy. So that basically says that almost half of the people that are of black race are going to get diagnosed with skin cancer. Of those people that are diagnosed with skin cancer, only 67% of them are still alive after five years. And that's almost 50% of people that are dead. (laughs) So that is definitely a reason to do an awareness show about because obviously we are not getting treatment. We are not getting diagnosed. We aren't checking. We aren't doing those self-exams. All of those things, and there's a huge disparity between the races. Whenever they're looking also at these non-white races, a lot of the population are Hispanic and Black patients as well. Hispanic people have very similar skin composition as Black people. So anyone that has a brown skin is going to have a different skin composition. So you're going to have more melanin, you're going to have more melanocytes, which is actually what makes you brown. And the more pigmented you are, the more melanin that you have in your skin. So it's a whole process. And I know even especially being here in Houston, Texas, I have several Hispanic friends and I know when I went to like Dominican Republic that it was a huge, huge, huge Dominican population, which would be Hispanic and they were very, very dark skinned. So it doesn't really matter whenever you're talking about black versus Hispanic, we're talking about the pigmentation of the skin, not necessarily the race. And we're talking about in the minority race of people that were affected by this. I want to know what the heck is going on and why is that not something that's being talked about and why is it not being addressed and why is there such this huge gap between 92% of white people after five years compared to 67% of minorities. First, the first thing that they have as a link to why there's this huge gap is that there's a lower public awareness for individuals with skin cancer. Second, there's a perspective of the healthcare providers. And third, there seems to be a lower index of suspicion for skin cancer in patients of color because the chances of them having skin cancers are smaller. So the doctor, whenever you go in, a lot of times those doctors or healthcare practitioners, they're looking at you like, you don't have skin cancer, whatever. That's just a mole because they know that the risk is smaller for you to get diagnosed with skin cancer. What happens is when you don't get diagnosed, you actually get diagnosed later in the latent stage of it. So usually the skin cancer has progressed and that is why there is this huge disparity with the percentages because whereas someone else may go in and they're a fair skin and they see a mole on their arm or on their shoulder or on their leg, wherever it is, they're looking at it and they're like, "Mm, I don't know, this doesn't look right. This looks kind of blistery. This is just not looking correct or what's going on with this? And they'll go to the doctor. But whenever you are brown, a lot of times, one, you may not even see the mole or the mark that is suspicious in the first place. And two, if you do, the doctor may be more inclined to blow it off or tell you it's nothing to worry about, or let's just keep monitoring it. And then you aren't diagnosed. They may not do the scraping. They may not do the testing. They may not do the biopsies that you need to have in order to get diagnosed. So basically, if you see something that isn't right on your skin, do not listen to your doctor if they try to brush you off. If you feel like something is not right, you feel like the size is a little off, make sure you make them test you. 
Another thing that I thought was really interesting when I started looking at this is that whenever you're looking at minorities with skin cancer, they're called acral melanomas. And acral melanoma basically means that it's something that's a cancerous lesion that's growing on the hands or the feet. And that's usually where minorities are going to see the cancer grow. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Beyond the Fit. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's an interesting fact. Like I wouldn't even think that. I didn't even know that. Even my experience as a nurse, I never really paid attention that that was the common location that black patients that came in had cancer. It would be somewhere like this. So what they're saying whenever I'm looking at the cancer.org, American Cancer Society, all of these medical websites that I looked up that had medical journals, all of this information about it, they all kind of have the same information. And they're saying that in minorities, UV radiation is a risk. So that means sun tanning, going out into the sun without sunscreen, sun exposure for an extended period of time. That's where you're going to get that UV radiation. So that's definitely a risk factor. And you see that often, especially whenever you're dealing with more of the lighter skin, fairer skin minorities. But what happens is whenever you're talking about people of color, they actually have more skin cancers that are diagnosed in non-sun exposed sites. So you're going to find more commonly a lesion on the bottom of your foot that grows into a cancerous lesion. And, and again, here we are. How many times are you picking up the bottom of your foot and looking at it and inspecting it and seeing if there's any type of discoloration. Do you have a mole that doesn't look right? I can tell you after I read this article, I went in the mirror and I looked everywhere. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute, let me look at the bottom of my foot. I look at the top of my foot. I make sure my toes look nice. I make sure my toes are painted. I make sure that my heels look nice. They aren't all crusty and crunchy. So I do that, you know, make sure my feet are smooth. But do I physically pick up my foot and look at the bottom of it and it's and, and inspect it? I do not. So if you <laughs> want to make sure that you are making sure that you are not at a risk of skin cancer, I'm going to need you guys for Skin Cancer Awareness Month to do a full head to toe assessment on yourself, including checking the soles of your feet, because that's a very common location. Another key thing that I was reading another article and another key thing, this is actually a physician and he was kind of giving how he's treating patients. He's an oncologist and he deals strictly with like skin cancer, skin melanoma, skin dysplasia, all kind of stuff like that. So he, this is what he has in his article that I read and it was talking about you know, not knowing, did he feel like there was also an increase in minorities that were getting later stage diagnoses because they thought that they were immune to skin cancer? And his reply was, yes, I do. I do think that. I think that melanin offers a natural protection against skin cancers from UV but also that people think that it's almost like a false immunity because you're brown. You think that you're not going to get skin cancer. Oh, I'm melanated. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. And what happens is we may also be participating in risky behaviors. We may be tanning at the pool. We may be doing things as fair skin people would be doing, but they are might be putting the sunscreen on. They might be doing other stuff. And because we think that there's an immunity because you have brown skin, then we are also doing riskier behaviors and not thinking that we're going to have any type of result. He was saying that a lot of times when he diagnoses his patients, they'll be so surprised because they think that like I said, the sole of their foot. But he said that a lot of times you also have in minorities, a lot of cancers that start from a nail bed. A lot of cancers will be in the eye that, you know, you think that, oh, okay, well, I just have a spot in my eye. And what happens is it's actually a form of skin cancer. 
So he was saying that, you know, education is really important. And that's why Skin Cancer Awareness Month is very important. I know every time I go to my yearly eye visit, I am constantly telling my doctor about I have a brown spot in my eye. And I'm like, are you sure it's not cancer? Are you sure it's not cancer? Are you sure it's not cancer? <laughs> Can we test it for cancer? I have can- I have cancer survivor. Can we test it for cancer? So I know that, you know, especially being in the healthcare field, I'm constantly making sure that if I see something that I'm asking about my doctor, I'm asking for testing. And because a lot of times you have to be an advocate for your Yourself because if you aren't, they may not, like we talked about earlier, the physician doesn't think you're at a risk. So they're not even going to order a whole barrage of tests or anything like that because they don't even think that there's a risk there. Another thing that I thought was important when I was looking up information about skin cancer for us to pay attention to is that they were doing a comparison about what the lesions look like and also why it's easier to not pay attention to the lesion or to think it's just a mole or something like that. So they said that basically 50% of basal cell carcinomas are pigmented, meaning brown in color in darker skin patients. So usually like if you look at typical basal cell carcinomas, that's what we're calling skin cancer. And you'll see on fair skin, what happens is you'll see like a pink, pearly growth that kind of looks crusted. You'll see like maybe the edges are like all scattered around. It's not a circular thing. It's not like a circular mole. It usually has like these edges that look kind of crazy, almost like if you just drop the splat of jam or something like that. That's usually how a normal basal cell carcinoma looks. And what happens is when you're looking in someone that is brown complected, what you'll see is that the lesion is pretty much like the same color of their skin. So a lot of times because the patients are brown and pigmented, now you have a lesion that's brown and pigmented, it's very easy to miss. So it's very important for you to look at your body on a regular basis and make sure you don't see anything abnormal. If you see a mole that is actually raised or that has like a blistery look to it, or it looks like it's like it, it's raised, all of those things are things that you should definitely bring up to your physician because they're not doing an assessment of your whole skin when you go to the doctor. They're going to deal with the issue that you're bringing up and then they're going to say, okay, all right, you're here for high blood pressure or you're here for an annual visit. Gotcha. This will doing this, 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 and go, let's go with it. So they're not going to sit there and like look at you head to toe. So if you see something, make sure you bring it up. Again, what's the biggest thing that we can do for ourselves to reduce our risk of skin cancer? It's going to be prevention. A big missing factor that they are discussing whenever you're talking about a minority brown skin population or anyone, people of color, whatever you want to say, from tan to all the way to really dark skin, wherever your whatever your race is, where you fit in that color scheme, whatever color hue you are, you are part of this brown melanated skin cancer. It doesn't matter what your race is at this point. It's not necessarily black or white. It's just anyone that's minority anyone that has any brown skin. So one of the key things that they're saying is a risk factor that we could implement in our daily routine to reduce that exposure and to help prevent any type of skin cancer is going to be using sunscreen. And one, first of all, it's important for everyone to use it. So when they're looking at why does it seem like brown people aren't using sunscreen. What's the issue? Why is it that people that are fair skin are wearing sunscreen with no issue and then anyone that has brown skin is not doing it? So first, they're saying that, and I think this is so funny because I just thought about growing up and I thought about my kids growing up and I started laughing because... (laughs) It's true. Whenever you put sunscreen on, especially someone that is more of a darker complexion, what happens is they look ashy. They call it an ashen appearance. But we used to say that they looked ashy. So a lot of times people don't want to put sunscreen on, especially the darker you are, because it makes you look like you're ashy. You have this white sort of coating on your skin where you just look sunken, you look ashy, and it's not cute. 
So a lot of times people may not put sunscreen on because they don't want to look that way. So what happens is, is that one, you don't do it. But because the fairer population, they don't care. Their skin is already white. So when they put on sunscreen, that it just blends right on in. It's not like it's it's not like it's a big deal. You can't even tell sometimes that the sunscreen is even has the white paste like it would on someone who's brown. I also have the same issue too. I, you know, hate when I go put sunscreen on my legs and then I go into the water, or I go into the pool, and then I come out and I like have a white coating all over my legs. Like who wants to look cute like that? But now as I've gotten older, I'm like, huh, let me tell you, give me the ashy look because I'd rather not have wrinkles and I'd rather not have skin cancer. (laughs) I'd rather not get sunburn, all of that. But we're trying to get the younger population. We're trying to bring awareness, all of that stuff. So what they're saying is that now there are more and more sunscreens that are being created that actually have different formulations that have things like nanoparticles and the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide where the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide have actually been micronized. And what that means is that it's going to limit the chalky look to your skin. And that's supposed to help better on darker skin tones. And also they're trying to have more of a call of action to these sunscreen companies to test formulations on diverse populations. So not just testing it on fair skin people, not just testing it on white people, not testing it on anyone that's above a certain color on the color hue, but we want to make sure that they are testing it across the entire skin color range so that the same benefits that someone with fair skin gets that someone with brown skin will get as well. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Beyond the Fit. So whenever you're looking for a sunscreen, make sure you're looking into those types of formulas. Make sure you're looking at the chemicals on the back of it. And then look for some words that say that about the formulation formulated for darker skin people or zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or micronized, things like that. I know it's really wordy and no one really goes in and says, hmm, let me go into the one, the Target or the Walmart and look for, um, excuse me, where's your nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide? <laughs> like no one really is saying that, but just have it in the back of your head that when you're looking that those are supposed to be some of the the combinations that actually are supposed to help where you don't have that chalky experience. So whenever you're talking to dermatologists, they are actually trying to win you over on sunscreen. And if you have any type of face routine, any type of face care routine, nightly routine, whatever it is, morning routine, you're starting to see that a lot of the anti-aging creams have sunscreen put in them. I know the one that I use every morning for my face, it actually has sunscreen in it. And it says it on there that it's an anti-aging, whatever, whatever, help with fine lines and wrinkles. And they also have an SPF, I think of 25 in it. So, you know, that's a a layer of protection that I put on without even thinking about it. That's something too, that if you don't have a good face routine in the morning, you can also help reduce not just your fine lines and wrinkles, but you can help reduce some of those UV rays, which is really important too. And another big benefit of using sunscreen and using those sort of anti-aging things is actually those types of lotions will help with hyperpigmentation. So if you feel like you have any type of discoloration in your face, if you feel like the, the skin is not smooth, a lot of those that have that sunscreen in it, they actually help because of all of those chemicals that are combined to have like a UV protective layer, they actually have something that will help with that hyperpigmentation. So make sure you are using something like that. Make sure you're using an anti-aging with the sunscreen, whatever it is. It's really, really easy. So what we want to make sure for our melanated population is that you want to 
encourage them to use the sunscreen. You want them to continue to use those facial products to help with hyperpigmentation. So what happens is when you're talking to minorities or anyone with melanated skin, you want to address those key things like hyperpigmentation and fine lines and wrinkles and things like that. And what happens is whenever you're saying and you're showing that, hey, UV rays are bad. UV rays actually can worsen hyperpigmentation on your face. So if you put sunscreen on your face, you can actually reduce some of this hyperpigmentation. You can actually have a smoother face. You can actually have smoother skin. You can reduce fine lines and wrinkles and you can stop those UV rays from causing skin cancer. So all winning, 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 winning. Great information about that. So make sure that you are using a facial formulation in your skincare routine to reduce your cancers of skin cancer. So one of the final things that I saw that I wanted to talk about was obviously what are the precautions and recommendations? I don't want to ever give a problem or I don't ever want to talk about a topic and then never even give you guys something to go home with that you can say, oh, well, let me implement this into my daily routine or let me implement this into my life some kind of way. Basically, the biggest precaution that they they recommend is monthly self-examinations, which I said earlier, go look in the mirror, do a head to toe, see that mold on your back, look at the mold on your butt, look in the bottom of your feet, look at the palms of your hands, check between your fingers, all of these common areas that you may not really even pay attention to. Use this opportunity to be aware about it. And then going forward, try and do just like we monitor for any other types of cancers, continue to look, make sure you're doing your monthly self exams on your skin also. So that way, if you do have a mole, you know, okay, well, two months ago, this was a flat mole that was circular. And now it's kind of got rough edges. It's not smooth anymore. It's not flat, you know, things like that. So make sure you're doing your monthly self-examinations and look in those high risk areas. Like I had said, they mentioned before the soles of the feet, your palms of your hands, the toenail beds, the fingernail beds. And they also said in your genital areas and places that people may not even seem to think that cancer would come. And that's really where the biggest learning gap is because people aren't checking those uncommon areas. They only check the common areas, you check their shoulders, their face, the back, whatever. So make sure you're doing that. If you do feel like you have something that's abnormal, make sure you do a dermatologist visit, make sure your dermatologist checks it out, keep an eye on it, make sure you're measuring it and stay diligent about your own care. Don't let it get, don't let it get pushed underneath the rug. You want to make sure that, you know, they're staying on top of it, take pictures of it so that you have something to compare in it. Another thing to be suspicious about and to really pay attention to and bring it up to the doctor is also a sore that doesn't heal. That's a key thing too. So not only is it just going to be a spot, but sometimes it actually has It is a lesion and it might be a sore and you're like, okay, so this is a sore and it's still here. It's not healing or it may scab and the scab just never goes away. Like something is abnormal. Make sure you're paying attention to that because a week of having a sore, your body should already have healed that. So if it's been a month and you have a lesion and it hasn't healed and it still looks like there's like a scab on it, then that's definitely something that you need to pay attention to. And a lot of times, even cancers inside of our bodies can actually, they call it metastasize. And a lot of times those cancers inside on organs can actually come through the skin. So you may have like, I see all the time, like people who've had breast cancer, and then you actually have a lesion like on your chest or on your collarbone or on your side, underneath your armpit, or people I've seen that had prostate cancer. They've actually had a lesion like on the inside of their groin. Pay attention to that too, because sometimes it's skin cancer on the outside, but it could actually be something that's going on on the inside too that has now transpired to the outside. So make sure you're not blowing anything off, following up with your doctor, checking those things out because it could actually save your life. You don't want to be one of these 67% 
survival. Well, you want to be the 67th <laughs> in a 67th percent because that means you're surviving. But I'm saying that you don't want to be in that situation where you're looking at a five year survival rate because you didn't get diagnosed until it had already grown or by the time they treated it, they had to have this really aggressive. You want to be able to do just like fair counterparts are. And whenever you have a small lesion, they're able to just chick, 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 go in there, scratch it off, scrape it off, send it off to the lab. They might be able to just just zap, radiate that area, and then you're done. You don't want to have to go where now you have to get chemotherapy or severe radiation to a huge giant spot because it has actually grown into something quite large. How to diagnose what skin cancer can look like. If you have a mole that looks different from your other moles, if the shape is dome shaped, meaning that it actually is rounded, it's not a flat mole. If it looks scaly, if it is a non-healing sore that returns and come back, or if you see a spot underneath your finger or toe bed, those are all definitely signs that you need to get this checked out and push for a biopsy and treatment. Don't let the dermatologist or the, your physician tell you that it's nothing to be worried about because the risk is low. And finally, if you do get diagnosed with skin cancer, if you do go in and they say, hey, we did a biopsy on you and it is actually skin cancer, a lot of times, basically what they do is bring you into the physician's office and they give you a lo local anesthetic, which is actually a shot into the area. And then they basically just cut off the basal cell carcinoma. So just remember, the treatment is really simple if you catch it early. A lot of times they just cut the little mole area off, cut the little area off, and then sometimes they have to go a little bit deeper into maybe some of the tissue underneath that. And sometimes it's later on getting diagnosed and they may have to do radiation where they actually radiate the area around it to make sure that there is no cancer cells surrounding that area. The treatment could actually be really, really quick, not as invasive as you think. So if something is suspicious and something doesn't feel right, do not wait. Go get it checked out. Life check just for today. Like we say, life check we always do at the end of the show. Basically, we want to make sure that you've retained all the information that we talked about today and you can implement that into your life. So today's life check, super, super easy. If something isn't right, go get it checked out. Don't be afraid. Don't think because you are brown skin, don't whether it be fair to dark skin, you still have a risk for skin cancer and May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So we want to make sure that we are not only making ourselves aware, but please make sure to share this information with other people. Make sure everyone is checking yourself. I don't know, have a girl's night out where you guys drink wine and eat pizza and then everyone check everyone's bottom of their foot, <laughs> whatever works to make sure that you are staying on top of those things. Make sure if some Something isn't right, you are getting checked out. And if your doctor is not listening to you and they are belittling your concerns, find another physician, find another dermatologist, whatever. Make sure that you're always getting proper care. And if something doesn't feel right, that you are not getting blown off. And make sure that you continue to stay diligent in your care because you may not have anything abnormal today, but that mole in a month from now or maybe next year, that spot may actually have grown or whatever. So just be diligent. Just pay attention to your body. Just keep making sure check your spouse, check your loved one, all of that stuff, pass that information on and keep listening in on our show as we go beyond the fit.